Hi, I'm Christina, and this is another episode of Bash Off is Open, and I'm here with Mr. David Locke. How are you doing, David? Good, Christina. So can you give us a little history about Locke's drugs? Locke drugs? I've owned it, well, I owned it in 1970. I bought it in 1970, February the 2nd. Owned it for about 10 years, and I sold out to John Mormon in 1979, because I got tired of working six days a week, no vacation, no days off. And been there ever since, kind of managing the pharmacist in charge. Before that, a guy named W.J. Miley opened it up in 1905 and had it for several years, he was a pharmacist, run it as a drugstore and a pharmacy, and then after that it became People's Drug, which a guy named Jack Ferguson owned it. But he wasn't a pharmacist and didn't have a pharmacist in there until I moved in there in 1970. About three years before that, uh, Bell Eskew had bought it and made it Bell's Emporium, which was kind of a gift shop with the soda fountain and antiques. And then when I moved there in 70, it opened up into a pharmacy again. So whenever you first starting out, were you kind of scared about it since it had been a pharmacy <laughs> in a while? Actually, I bought out an existing drugstore, brought out Price's Drug, which is across the street where the old bakery used to be. Uh, Mr. Price closed up on Saturday night at 6 o'clock on January the 31st, and we opened up February the 2nd, Monday morning at 7.30. And, uh, when I went home that night, my jaws were hurting because my jaws were so tight all day long for being nervous. <laughs> but I actually had a base of prescriptions, so it wasn't like starting anew. So mm -hmm. it was. A, and was it slow to get customers, or was it pretty quick to get those customers? No, we kind of with the kind of kept company they, they, we built on that. I built on his business, and uh, it really took off. We were the only place on Main Street that had any kind of food or, or fountain service. There was nothing else downtown you could get coffee. Mm -hmm. So we did a tremendous fountain business, which generated a lot of traffic, and that helped the drugstore business, the pharmacy part of it. So, so now in today's time, what is kind of your really big hitter at Lock Drugs? Uh, the prescriptions. You know, we got uh, the fountain draws people, but mainly our, our prescription business is a big thing, and we've done well. We've got uh, H E B, Walmart, Walgreens, CVS now, but we still do well because of our, our service. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I opened up first, uh, I was, I'd worked for Walgreens in San Antonio as a pharmacist. And they had a, a Walgreens agency business, they, which I, was a, I became a Walgreens agency store when I opened up. That means I sold Walgreens products mm -hmm. and participated in their uh, advertising program. So I, I did that until they quit doing it back in the mid-70s. So, but that helped too, of generating a lot of uh, business. But now it's basically about boiled down to just prescription business. The fountain, a few over-the-counter things, also we built on our herbal business. We've got a real good selection of herbal drugs and natural homeopathic medicines. Mm -hmm. So that helps too. We get a lot of people that come in for that. So speaking of the fountain, you recently had a little blurb in the Parade Magazine, which is a national circulating magazine. Did that Kind of bringing yeah, we got, customers? got several. I talked to several people myself personally that came down there because of that. We also got a letter from a lady in New York wanted the, the recipe for the frosted cokes and some of our fountain drinks. So we got those together and mailed them to her. That's super cool. So, um, being in the bath shop community, has anything really touched you or stood out to you just from the community? I just, you know, just I was born here raised in Bastrop and I just uh, appreciate the, the, the support that the, the community has shown my drugstore there. That the, the, the loyalty of our customers and with all the competition we have and all of the businesses moving out of Main Street that we still have people that want to come down to lock drugs and I really appreciate the support the Bastrop community has shown us. And so for a new business owner, because you're a very experienced business owner mm -hmm. and manager of a business, do you have any advice to somebody who's starting out? Yeah, you know, at first, just starting out a business is going to be hard, especially nowadays and with the competition, uh, competition we have. You know, uh, it depends on what kind of business. We happen to find a niche that we can make it on Main Street, that you need to find out what kind of business will go and stay with it through the hard times. Don't get, don't get panicky. I know when HEV and Walmart opened in 87, we've seen some hard days. And a lot of businesses on Main Street closed, but don't, 
don't get scared. Just keep doing what you're doing and do a little better. Yeah. And stick, stick good, to good, it. good service, reasonable price, and be accommodating to people. And you'll always have customers. And I think that's the big thing. Whatever business you're in, treat them like you'd like to be treated if you go into a, a business. Mm -hmm. I always kind of use the golden rule. Well, I treat people, they come in there like I like to be treated when I go into a, an, another store. I learned too long time ago about remembering people's names. When they walk in, call them by name. Mm -hmm. They like that. It's all oh, I'm known here, you know, you know me. I go somewhere else and uh, I'm just a person. Uh, you know, I'm not, not, I'm not anybody special, but you, can, you know, call them by name, they feel a little special. It makes a difference. Makes a big difference. All right, well, this is another episode of Bash Shop is Open. I'm Christina, this is Mr. David Locke, and I'll see you next week.